Ukraine launched an armored offensive against Russia's weakly defended Kursk region, causing panic among the civilian population and forcing Moscow to urgently bring in additional troops. Villages near the Russian border were evacuated as hundreds of Ukrainian troops moved forward in fast-moving armored vehicles, the Wall Street Journal reports. Russia has deployed army units, border guards and warplanes to confront Ukrainian forces and said Wednesday it had stopped Ukrainian forces. Russian military bloggers close to the Russian military said Ukraine had captured several villages and advanced several kilometers in two directions. Ukrainian officials have not commented, but analysts said the move appeared to be a more serious incursion than previous cross-border raids in other areas that were carried out by lightly armed commandos who retreated after a few days. It is obvious that this is something completely new. This is a full-scale army operation, said Ruslan Pukov, director of the Moscow-based defense think tank CAST. The purpose of the raid was not immediately clear. Ukraine's frontline defenses are fragile against a larger and better armed enemy. Russia is advancing on the key Ukrainian logistics hub of Pokrovsk and is advancing on the nearby town of Chesov Yar, located on strategic heights in the eastern Donbass. Ukraine cannot open a second front. They need to stabilize the front line in Donbass, said Nick Reynolds, a research fellow in land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute in London. The speed and suddenness of the Ukrainian operation appears to have caught Russian forces by surprise. Ukraine may be hoping that Russia will divert forces from the front in eastern Ukraine, easing the pressure on Ukrainian forces there. Advancing forward could allow the Ukrainian army to disrupt Russian supply lines to its troops near Kharkov. The attack also demonstrates that Ukraine is not done with cross-border raids and that Russia should not sit quietly on its own territory, said Reynolds, a research fellow at RUSI. While senior Russian officials have downplayed the scale of the Ukrainian offensive, Russian military bloggers and volunteers close to the military say Kyiv's troops have entered a lightly guarded area with unprepared defenses and weak troops. They reject the official Russian line that the offensive has been halted, arguing that Ukraine is sending in reserves to continue its offensive while Russia struggles to bring in additional forces from afar. A state of emergency has been declared in Kursk Oblast, acting Governor Alexei Smirnov reported. Among the reasons for this decision, he named the difficult operational situation in the border areas and the need to eliminate the consequences of the Ukrainian armed forces' entry into the region. Due to the U.S. ban on using long-range weapons on Russian territory, Ukraine has lost a unique chance to destroy a large number of Su-34 aircraft. Back at the beginning of the summer, Kiev repeatedly asked Washington to give the go-ahead to strike Russian military airfields with American long-range weapons, Forbes reports. Since the West refused to give the go-ahead, Kyiv used weapons of its own production to strike at Russian territory. Most recently, on the night of August the 3rd, Kyiv used drones to attack the Morozovsk military airfield. Ukrainian intelligence reported one destroyed Su-34 and two more damaged aircraft. Ukraine is trying with all its might to destroy the Su-34s, which carry cabs. The Russian Federation also understands this very well and is trying to relocate most of its aircraft to distant airfields. Experts write that at the beginning of the summer, Kyiv had a good opportunity to destroy in one fell swoop about 10 Su-34 aircraft, which were based at the Voronezh Malt Sevo Air Base. Kyiv then sent a request to Washington asking for permission to strike the airbase with ATA CMS missiles. However, the White House did not allow it. To be on the safe side, the Kremlin decided to relocate its aircraft deep into the Russian Federation. Experts also stated that even if the US gives the go-ahead for strikes deep into Russia in the future, it will be too late since all major aircraft will be out of range of ATA CMS. To force the enemy not to launch massive strikes with cabs, it is necessary to destroy up to 10 Su-34 aircraft. The Morozovsk airbase has been previously targeted by Ukraine. A source in intelligence agencies told the Kyiv Independent in April that six warplanes stationed at the airfield had been destroyed in a Ukrainian attack. The Su-34 has emerged as a pivotal asset for the Russian aviation in the conflict in Ukraine. 
In April, reports highlighted that the Su-34 could potentially be fully loaded with Fab 500M62 homing bombs under its wings, mounting two on each side. This information was confirmed by a photograph released by Russia's Ministry of Defense. Recently, although the frequency of Russian air-to-surface cruise missile attacks on Ukraine has dipped, there has been a noticeable rise in the deployment of cruise bombs. The picture shared by Russia's ministry underscores analysis from numerous experts, suggesting that aircraft bombs are a significant component of Russian fighter armaments. These gliding bombs, fitted with flight control surfaces, operate as countermeasure weapons. This means that launching these bombs doesn't require the aircraft to be near the target, unlike traditional gravity bombs. This strategy reduces the aircraft's vulnerability to enemy anti-aircraft defenses.